Okay, uh, welcome to the session on Python. If you remember last time, uh, we had done some advanced indexing techniques to access the array and different elements in a array. Okay, now to uh, move ahead with the same uh, indexing and how to access the arrays other than the advanced uh, indexing techniques, there's one more which is a Boolean array indexing technique, which can be used to access the elements from an object or from an array. Okay, this type of advanced uh, indexing is used when uh, the resultant object is meant to be the result of a Boolean operation. Okay, such as your comparison operators, if you remember, your less than sign, greater than sign, not equal to, all this are your comparison operators. And all these comparison operators actually returns a Boolean value. Okay, that is true or false. So using this uh, such techniques, let us see one example on how to make use of the Boolean indexing technique to access elements. So I'll write the small code here. So let us import the NumPy first. Okay, so import numpy as np will create an array, say x equal to np dot array. That is the function which we have been using to create the array. Now I'll be creating a multi-dimensional array. So let us uh, have the first. This is my first, and inside this I'll be having some at least three or four rows. So let us quickly type some values. So this is my first row. Don't forget to put a comma after this. Then the second one. One more. So we'll have six, seven and eight. And we'll put the last one here as 9, 10, and 11. Okay, so this is my 2D array with how many rows? We have four rows and three columns. Okay, that's my dimension. I'll print this uh, array here. So I'll just write print and bracket X. Now we'll have the new line character so that whatever I print should be printed on a new line. Okay. Now, what I want is I want to uh, find out or uh, display all the items which are greater than, say, let us say, five. So here we have a Boolean indexing technique which we'll be using. So I'll write here, friend, say, items greater than five. Okay. And I can put a slash N after this. Now to print uh, all the values greater than five, I can write it like this. I can write print. X is my array name in the square bracket. Inside this, I can give the condition. While giving the condition, I need to refer to the name of the array. Okay, so the name of my array is X. So X greater than five. Okay, let me put some spacing so that becomes more clear. So what is going to happen is if the value which is stored in the array, in my array X is greater than five, it is going to display it. else it is not going to display. So it is going to access one element at a time. Okay. And if the value is greater than five, only then it is going to display it. So let us execute this code. And please remember, because uh, we are use the comparison operator greater than sign, it is going to return true or false. Right. If the condition is true, only then it prints the value. So when I run this, here you can see all the values. Now it's not displayed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up to 5, it is not displayed. The first two rows. Okay. As soon as you get a value which is greater than 5, uh, five you get the values. So we get 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. 
if I make a change here and I want all the values which are less than five, okay, previous values. So I got zero, one, two, three, four. Clear? Makes sense. So if I, uh, if I want to make use of some conditions, okay, I can easily make use of the conditions inside the square bracket where uh, we are supposed to actually pass the indexes. We are passing a condition here, which results in a Boolean value. Okay. And depending on that, con that condition, either I'll get the value displayed or it is going to skip that value. Okay. So this is one small example on how to make use of the Boolean array indexing technique. Let us take one more example where uh, I'll be using a function inside uh, the square brackets. So let us create an array. Let us say a equal to np dot array. Okay. Now in this, uh, there's one keyword which I'll be using to create an array that is known as NAN, N-A-N. It means not a number. Okay. Now such type of values can be stored in the array. Basically when we are accessing a file or we are accessing a database and the, uh, the numeric value is absent there. It's not there. Okay. It is different than none, N-O-N-E, none. And NAN is different. Okay. None means there's nothing. Okay. Whereas NAN means there's has to be something, but it is not a number. Yeah. So I'll create an array and I'll try to store in the square bracket. I'll store np dot nan. Okay, not a number. And I'll store some few numbers as well. See 11, 22. And then again, I'll put nan. Comma, let us put some numbers like 3, 56, and some numbers like this okay now whenever i trade let us print this first so i'll print the value a okay and let us uh, mark this as or uh, let us run this okay here you can see we have nan getting display then 11 point then 22 point nan again 3 56 and 87 okay now, by default, whenever we have uh, assigned a value, not a numerical value that is an add, inside my array, it treats that array as a, a float uh, array, you can say, not an integer array. Okay, an integer array will have only integer values. As you can see, the previous uh, array was, was integer numbers, all were integers. Whereas this one, especially the E, where we have kept NAN in that, we are getting 11 point. We are getting the decimal places as well. Okay. Now what I'll do is I do not want this NAN to get displayed. Okay. So I'll give a condition. So that condition can be given here itself. So I, I'll put a square bracket here. And inside the square bracket, I'll write a condition not. Now your not is actually given by a tilde sign. So this is my sign. Okay. So it will convert your true to false and false to true. Right? And the function which I'll be using np dot is nan. If it is nan, that means it is going to return true. If it is not, it is going to return false. Right? Now, because of this tilde sign under the not sign, I convert the true to false and the false to true. Okay. Inside this round bracket, I'm going to pass the value a. So it will refer to the first number. If it is uh, not a number, it is going to return true. Okay. Sorry, is nan will give me true or false. So the first one is going to give me true. Okay. And because of that not sign, it will become false. Okay. So let us complete this and nothing else. I'll just run this code. And now you can see it is displaying me all the values except for nan. Okay, so it started. It encountered the first number as nan, and it did not print it. Okay, whereas eleven was uh, 11, uh, not a nan value, and I got it displayed here. Right. So what we have done here, we have given 
a function, we are using a function specially which is going to return a Boolean value. Okay, so you can specify something like this as well in your array as a array uh, as an index for your array. Okay, this uh, one small code also which we'll try to see later on. We'll write a quick uh, code to sort an array. So using this type of uh, you know notations where we give in the square bracket we give the actual uh, conditions and all. We'll try that as well. Okay, moving forward, we can also check whether uh, my type, if suppose we have the other type called complex, okay, whether it is a complex type, I don't want to display, or I want to display only the values which are complex. For example, if I have an array here, uh, say again, A, I'll use A as well again, np dot array, okay, and in the square brackets, I'll pass some uh, numbers, say one, comma. And I'll also uh, pass a complex value. If you remember, the complex value is actually displayed with plus j and so on. So if I want to give some numbers, let us give, say, 2 plus, say, 6 or 5j or something like that. So this is a, a complex number. Okay, complex value. Then I give, say, 3 here. And one more value, let me give 3.5 plus 5j. Okay, so such values, let us say from this array, I want to display only the complex values. I do not want to display the integer values. Again, I can make use of NP. So I have uh, the array name A. Inside the square bracket, I can give the condition here. So I have a function called is complex function, which again gives me true or false, depending on the, whether the number or the element is a complex number or not. Okay, so I can use np dot is complex. Okay, this is my function. And inside the round bracket, I pass the name of my array, that is a. So if it is a complex value, it is going to display it. If it is not a complex value, it's going to ignore it and it is not going to display the value. So let us execute this code and here you can see the first number that is number one one is not getting displayed, whereas two plus, you can see this uh, 6G, which was a complex number, got displayed, okay? So all these numbers which are complex are getting displayed depending on my condition, right? So this is the way you can make use of the uh, Boolean indexing technique to access the elements from your array. Now, just to write a small code, I wanted to show you one small code. So I'll create a new file will write a function today, okay, which will uh, sort my array, okay. Just look at the way we have done the coding. That is what I wanted to show you here. So we'll uh, import numpy because I want to create an array as np, okay. My first code will be a function. So to create a function, as you know, we make use of the keyword def, okay. So def is my keyword. We begin the function with the definition keyword or def keyword, okay? Uh, let us name this as a quick sort, okay? This is my function. And to this function, I'm going to pass an array. Let us put uh, the array as ARR, okay? Then it has to be followed by a colon and then begins my block, the array block or the function. My first condition, I want to write a if condition here, if in the round bracket, my length, or you can write if length is a function to check the length of my array. First of all, my length of the array should be greater than one, right? If it is less than or equal to one, uh, we'll just return the array back because there's nothing to sort, isn't it? So if it is less than equal to one, okay? What I have to do, I have to return back the array, which I have got it. So I say return ARR, right? Let us say it is greater than one. So if it is greater than one, then I need to sort this array so that I get my array in my ascending order, okay? To do that, I'm, I'll be using a recursive function. What is a recursive function? A function which is called from within itself. 
So if I have to call this function, that is your quick sort, from within itself, it becomes a recursive function. So this function is going to go inside a loop until and unless it encounters this return statement on line number 12. So when the length of my array is either one or less than one, only then it is going to go back to the function from where we have called this function. Okay, so in this, I'll be having a pivot or let us say the center point, the middle point. So I'll call it as a pivot. Your pivot equals to array. In the square bracket, uh, here I'll give, I want to give the index position, but because we do not know the full length of the array, I cannot use a constant. And I want the uh, middle index, the center index of the array. So I can make use of the length function. So I'll give length ARR and I'll divide this by two. Now, if I divide this by two, I might get a value in floating points. That means I can get to say, uh, let us say the size of the array is seven. So if uh, seven divided by two is going to give me, you know, three, uh, three point something, which I don't want to happen. And I want only the integer part because my indexes are not in decimal points. They are in integers. So instead of using slash, I'll use the integer division that is double slash. Okay, so this is going to help me get if even if I divide seven by two, it is going to give me three and not 3.5. Okay, so the index now, when I say pivot equal to array into square bracket, the length of the array, let us say the length of the array is seven. 7 divided by integer division by 2 will give me 3. So it is going to get the value which is at index position 3 and store it in the variable pivot. Okay. Now, using this pivot, I'll be writing some conditions so that I can arrange my elements in such a way that it comes in an ascending order. Okay. So we'll create three types of arrays. One, I'll keep the left the middle and the right. Okay. So let us keep left here. So left equal to in the square bracket. Now I'll be putting my whole loop. I'll be using a for loop. So I want to assign X here for X in now for X in array. So ARR Okay, so X is a variable. It is going to extract one element at a time from my array. Okay, and in this, I'll be assigning it to X only if the value is less than the pivot value. Okay, the center value or the middle value. So I'll give a if condition here. So if X is less than pivot. Okay, now I'll just print this and show it to you how it looks from this uh, array. We have to still uh, pass the values. So I'll come back and below here, I'll create one array called ARR equal to NP dot array. Okay, and uh, to this, I'll pass some random numbers so that uh, I get the sorted ones. So I'll use a 1D array only. Let us put uh, say three comma c6 8 or let us put some numbers which is uh, c2 then comes 8 then say 10 say 21 then 1 and say uh, 18 okay so how many values we have here we have uh, 3 plus 6 7 8 values okay We'll also check with the uh, odd number of values, whether this function works properly or not. Fine. Quickly, I'll write the other part also to get the middle value. I'll write equal to. Now, instead of using X less than pivot, I'll write X equal to pivot. That's the only difference here. So for X uh, in the ARR, if X is and uh, the comparison operator is double equal to sign, not a single equal to sign. 
as you remember single equal to is assignment and double equal to is comparison operator and we are going to use pivot here so this will give me the middle value the middle value will be a number itself right it won't be an array please remember whereas the left and the right side of the array okay so we'll have a right here for right i'll be using x greater than pivot okay so i'll have x for x in arr if x is greater than pivot so what is going to happen is the left hand side is going to get all the values uh, which is having uh, less than the pivot value okay the middle is going to have one value there and uh, the right side where we have the right we have values all which are greater than the pivot for x in array if x is greater than pivot okay there are some warnings coming here let us see the warnings later on and once we do this uh, we have got the left we have got the middle and the right we are now actually going to make a call to the function again from here okay now this statement indicates we are making a re uh, recursive function call so it becomes a recursive function so here first of all i'll have a return statement okay and i'll make a call to the function quick sort again with the left array okay and the final return will should have all the values so i have plus middle now what is middle middle is having only a single number it won't be an array fine right? and one more call let us say the left is already sorted we have to sort the right as well so again there is a function call here so i have quick sort here function call with the arrays which are stored or the elements which are stored in the array right Okay, so we have right here. Now let us make a call to the function from here. So I'll uh, directly I'll write the print statement. So I'll give print, and from inside this I'll make a call to the function quick sort. Okay, and I'll pass the array which we have arr to this function. Now just for your information i'll just explain you how this function is going to work now what is going to happen is this whole array this 1d array is going to be passed and stored in this variable arr okay now the length of this array is greater than 1 so it is not going to execute line number 12 it is going to come here and get the pivot value now what is the pivot value length of my array is 8 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4 okay that is the numerical value 4 or the integer value and which is my uh, value at index position 4 we have 0 1 2 3 4 so 10 is the number so 10 will be stored in pivot okay now when i write this left equal to x for x in array arr there is a condition here okay now depending on this condition the values are going to be stored in my array left so 3 is less than 10 so it is going to store it in left again 6 is also less than 10 2 is less than 10 8 is less than 10 10 is not less than 10 so this is not going to go to the left array neither 21 but 1 is less than 10 so 1 is going to be stored in left okay middle is going to just have this value 10 and my right array is going to have all the values which are greater than 10 so 21 and 18 will be stored in right when i come to the uh, statement uh, line number 20 here i make a call to this function again so it is not going to come back to this uh, line number 25 after this return it is actually going to go to the function and it is going to pass a new array which is stored in the variable left so what is going to be the value in left all the values less than 10 will be now in my array now so this is my second call to the function again it is going to perform the same thing and repeat the same again and again till the length of my array is either less than or equal to 1 once it is equal to 1 that means i have only one element in that particular array it is going to return back from here now 
So only one value is going to get get returned here. Then it has plus middle. Again, there is a call for the function quick sort, but this time with a new array called write. Okay. So this function is going to keep on executing and fetching me single single values in a proper order, so that my whole array gets sorted in descending order. Okay, that's the logic behind writing this function. Now, when I run this, let us see how it works out. Now, here you can see my whole array is sorted. So we get one, two, three, six, eight. 10 18 and then 21 let us make some few changes you know we'll make this as say 12 and see whether it works and if you want you can also include some negative numbers in this and i'll increase one more number so that it becomes the length becomes odd and i give you say two here okay run this yeah you can see now Again, it has been sorted properly. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 8, 10, 12, 18, and 21. Okay. So this was just an example to show you. One, to show you can we can make a call to the function from within itself. And secondly, to show you how to write a condition inside the square bracket and create an array like this. Like line number 16, 17, and 18, where we have given a condition. We are making use of a for loop as well. Okay, accessing each element from the array, checking the condition whether it is less than pivot and storing it in the array called left. Similarly, we do it in for middle and for right. I hope this is clear, everyone. Any doubts? Uh, uh, because it will take some time for you to digest this whole logic. Okay, you are actually supposed to take a pen and paper and check how the flow goes. When we especially when we make a call to the function again from within itself. Okay, so I want you all to just go through this program, you know, n number of times and check how the flow is moving and how actually this array is getting sorted. Okay, so this is one of the logic for your quick sort. Those who have already done uh, previous programming languages might have come across different types of uh, sorting algorithms or logics. Okay, so. If you want, you can try some programs based on your array, try writing a function and sorting the array using different logics as well. Any doubts in this program here? Okay, fine, there's no doubt. Let's go ahead. So we saw uh, how to you know, use the Boolean values in the index as an index and access the array elements. So I just took uh, two few examples. Now this was the only uh, operator I used. If you want, you can make use of the other operators as well. Basically, which returns a Boolean value that is true or false. Okay, then we also made use of a function here and another function called is complex. Right, let us go ahead and uh, I'll write uh, some, uh, let us write a program especially uh, highlighting broadcasting technique in uh, NumPy. Okay, now what is broadcasting? The term broadcasting refers uh, to the ability of this uh, package uh, NumPy to treat arrays of different shapes. Okay, during arithmetic operation, usually whenever we have different uh, sizes or shapes okay, or dimension, you can, you can call it. If suppose I have two arrays of different dimension, and we want to perform some uh, arithmetic operation on both of them. You know, both are involved, especially when both are involved. You know, it might generate you error because of the size of the different arrays. Okay, but uh, in uh, NumPy, it is possible to perform operations or arithmetic operations, even if your dimensions of your arrays are different. Okay, but provided there are some rules which uh, you have to follow, I'll just take uh, some one small example and then I'll uh, tell you what are the rules which uh, need to be followed if you want to perform operations uh, based on arrays having different sizes okay so let us quickly write one small example and see the output first and then I'll uh, call out the rules and if you want you can note it down as well 
I'll import uh, the NumPy. as np and uh, we'll create some basic 1d array so i have t as np dot array and uh, in the square bracket let us pass some values say one two three and four more than enough okay and one more array uh, say b equal to np dot array again in the square bracket i'll pass again say let's put 10 20 30 30 and 40. now in this example which i'm taking uh, the dimension of both the arrays are same that is the length of the array is uh, first of all the dimension is 1d and the length is uh, four elements are there in both the arrays now, if I perform any calculation, let us say C equal to, if I have to multiply this, uh, both the arrays, so A multiplied by B, okay, and I display the value, print C, okay. Uh, uh, what will happen, each element, now what is happening, A multiplied by B, so here you can see, I'll put this properly, okay. Now, here you can see, uh, 10 multiplied by 1 uh, gives me 10, then 2 multiplied by 20 gives me 40. Then 3 into 30 gives me 90. 4 into 40 gives me 160. And that's my output. Now, this is very simple. When, uh, when the dimension is also same and uh, the number of elements in both the arrays are also same. But the problem occurs uh, when uh, the dimensions are different. Let us say we have a two-dimension array and I am multiplying it with a, a 1D array. Okay. Then things look difficult. But as I told you, uh, using broadcasting in NumPy package, you know, we can easily do calculations uh, based on two different types of uh, shapes or different types of dimensions. But there are some uh, possible, uh, this uh, rules which we need to follow. Okay. Now I'll just read out some uh, rules here. Now it says that if the dimension of two arrays are dissimilar, that is they are different. Now, element-to-element -element operations are not possible, right? But however, operations on array of non-similar shapes is still possible in NumPy because of the broadcasting capabilities. The smaller array in broadcast, the smaller array is broadcast to the size of the larger array so that they have compatible shape, okay? Now, what are the different rules which need to be followed? The first rule is the array with smaller dimension than the other is prepended with one in its shape. It has to be done automatically or it is done by Python itself. Secondly, the size in each dimension of the output shape is maximum of the input size in that dimension. Okay. Now, I think uh, I'll provide you a note on based on all these rules, because just calling out and uh, telling you the rules, uh, it is not going to get digested very easily. But still, uh, for your namesake, I'm just calling out the rules. Uh, the third rule is that an input uh, can be used in calculation if its size in a particular dimension matches the output size or its value is exactly one. Okay, this is my third rule. And the fourth rule is that if an input has a dimension size of one, now the dimension size of one uh, will hardly matter. So if it is only one, there's only one element in the other array or the second array, the first data entry in that dimension is used for all the calculations. Okay. Now to just give you an example, I'll just write one small example and uh, regarding the notes or the rules which are used, especially for uh, broadcasting, in NumPy, I'll forward you the notes on your Google Classroom. Okay. To write a, pro a small program, what I'll do is uh, I'll create another array which is of multi dimension. Or let us change this itself. So I'll just delete this one. What I'll do is I'll create a, a 2D array. Let's put some numbers here, say 0, 0, 0. Okay, and another one, 
So we run from a one from a one. And some few numbers as well. So this is two comma two comma two. Okay. So I have three rows and three columns. Uh, and I'll just complete this complete the round bracket. Okay. I'll create another array. Now this time I'll create a 1D array. So this will be np dot array. And in this, I'll just put uh, some numbers. Uh, let's see, one comma two comma three. Okay. And uh, we can add this up, or you can do any type of calculation you want. So let us add this up. I'll write C equal to A plus B. Okay, and I'll print the value which is there in C. Now, what is going to happen here is uh, the second array, that is uh, where we have only one dimension, only one D. This will be this one row is going to be used to perform addition with each of the rows. Okay, so uh, in the first row, I'll get one, uh, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 3, and I'll get 1, 2, 3 here. The same 1D array, that is 1, 2, and 3, will be used to perform addition with the second row, and then the third row, and so on. Okay, let us run this and check whether it happens. Here you go. Here we have, you can see this, 1, 2, 3 for the first one. So this is getting added, right? Now, this is a 1D array, and this is your... 2D array, but still the operations are possible. And it is possible only because of the package NumPy. If you are using, you are not using NumPy and you're trying to do this uh, calculation in simple Python without using NumPy, it might generate you some error. Okay, so this is one simple example of broadcasting. And if I change this, even if I change this to four, whether it's going to work out, it's not going to work out. It should give me an error but uh, let us check it out what happens okay now here you can see the operands could not be broadcasted together with the shape three comma three and we have your four elements that is in my 1d array clear the dimensions are different but the number of elements in each row should be same so this is one of the rules which you need to follow let us make some changes here and put some different values and check whether it works. Okay. Now there's one more uh, few sets of rules uh, which is set to be followed if you want to perform broadcast casting or the arrays can be broadcasted only if it follows some rules. Okay. Uh, the array must exactly have the same shape this one, that means both are of the same dimension. There's a basic rule, right? So calculation can happen easily. Whereas uh, there's another rule which says that array have the same number of dimensions and the length of each dimension is either a common length or one. So as I showed you a different length and it gave me an error, it should be either a common length or it should be one. Okay, for example, if I say reduce this, if I have only three here, whether it's going to work. Let us run this. Okay. So what is happening? I have a length as one. Previously it was common. Greater than was not working. But uh, if the length is one, it takes three and adds it with all the values which are there in my 2D array in A. Okay. So three is getting added to all the values. That is what this rule says. Okay. And the last rule is Array having too few dimensions uh, can have its shape prepended with a dimension of length one. Okay, so that the above properties are also true. So these are some few examples uh, which uh, I wanted to take, especially regarding broadcasting. Now, when we come next, we'll see some few more functions based on array and NumPy. Basically, uh, when we are using uh, NumPy, the main purpose of using NumPy is for array handling. Okay, that's all for today. And if you have doubts, I hope you're also practicing it. 
if you have any doubts you can raise any questions right now as well or you have any other questions other than uh, python you can ask me now as well so i just stop the recording